Ladies and gentlemen, Laughing Hyena recording artist, Willie Farrell. How we doing? We good? You all right? You look a little upset, this guy right here. You okay? What's your name? Jay. Jay, team drink for Jay. Look a little upset, something bothering him. Oh, you'll be upset later, trust me. My name's Willie. In case you're wondering by looking, I'm Italian, full-blooded Italian, and the Italian's here tonight. Well, not enough to start a fight, so shut up. My dad was a gangster, did you know that? Yeah. Being Italian, people always say, yeah, you know, say something Italian. I say, get in the trunk. <laughs> he was a gangster. He wanted me to be a gangster as a kid. I had to go away to a little mafia camp when I was a kid. I went to Camp La Cosa Nostra, good camp. <laughs> Rival camp, real mean camp, a district attorney's kids. Camp Subpoena. <laughs> they used to ride over on their little ponies and kick over our campfire and then ride away. So late at night, we'd go over there and cut the little ponies' heads off and put them in their sleeping bags. <laughs> Hell with them, I got a merit badge for that. <laughs> Used to play little camp games. My favorite was hide and go testify. That was fun. <laughs> but I finally told my dad I won't be a gangster kid no more, so I won't be a normal kid. He says, what do you want? I said, I, want, I don't know, a lot of things. I want the puppy, bike. You know what I really wanted more than anything else in the world? I wanted a paper route. You know, my dad got me a paper route. One day he even helped me collect $32,000. <laughs> I don't think we had to break Mrs. Johnson's arms. My dad said, hey, she's lucky she didn't get frickin' whacked, so. I think of jobs I wouldn't want, though. Here's jobs I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to be uh, the guys in the Midway, the carnival people. You ever go to the Midway, the fair, you see the carnival people running the rides. You ever seen them? I wouldn't want that job, you know why? No dental plan. No dental plan. Why? Why do they gotta look like that, every one of them? Every one of them! No, I was walking through the Midway at the Iowa State Fair with my wife. Listen to this. I see a guy running one of the rides. One tooth. One. Big tooth, too, because apparently when you lose all the other teeth, the one will just take over. It was like a big green garage door tooth. Sticking out of this guy's pumpkin head. For some reason, it upset me, it did. Just walked, look at the guy's one tooth, I'm looking at him, I'm going, look at this clown with the tooth. Because I got to thinking, you know what? He, he had 32, like the rest of us. Now he's down to one. You know, at nine or 10, he should have thought, hey, maybe I should try that floss or something. Maybe I should gargle with that plaque stuff. That might help. You don't wait till you get the one, Cletus. And now that you're at one, pull that son of a gun. You lost the war against gingivitis, you get the one. And for some reason, I think he's mocking me. I think that the whole reason he's got one tooth is just to bug me. Because I'm looking at this beaver over here running the ride with the tooth. And I start yelling at him, hey, Gumby, why one? <laughs> know what happens? My wife gets mad at me. She's like, leave him alone. Why you gotta pick on everybody? He, he still, he's all right. He can still, why you gotta, he can still eat and stuff. Why you gotta do that to him? I'm like, he can eat, what can he eat? She said, I, apple. I said, no, he can poke a hole in that. <laughs> he can have an apple stuck to his tooth, this clown. This is the guy you bring to the, to the kegger to pop the keg. This is the, this guy right here with the tooth. Yet, there's people getting on the ride with the guy, with the one tooth. Putting their children on a ride with the guy, one tooth. No other profession would you trust your life or the life of your children to a guy with one tooth. Jay, let's say you got on an airplane and the pilot come out of the cockpit. One big green garage door Kukla Fran Alley tooth. Look like that dragon on Kukla Fran Alley. You'd jump off that TWA, wouldn't you? Yet you're gonna put little Jay Jr. there on the whirl of whip with this clown with the one tooth sticking out. Hell, you will. <laughs> hey, pal, how you doing? What's your name? Jeff. Jeff, what do you do? Farm. Farm. God bless the farmers. 
What do you do? Farm. I mean, what do you do? You farm stuff? You got pigs, cows? What are we doing here? Got everything? Got pigs? Hogs. They call them hogs. I don't know. It's a different thing. Cows? How many? How many head? They always say head. See, I learned that. When you ask, if you want to sound knowledgeable, you say, how many head of cattle? Because if they tell you, then they'll tell you how many cows are. Unless you've got like a two-headed cow, then you should be in a circus. <laughs> how many head? 600 head. Right how many pigs? Huh? <coughs> 1,500? See, now I don't even believe that. That's too many. I can understand 600 cows, because cows, you can, Jay, honestly, you see a cow, you can count a cow, because a cow won't move. Cows stay in one place for like a month. Just stay <laughs> Cows are stupid. You can go up to a cow with a gun, put it to his head, and he won't even move. Here. Blow your brains out, stupid. Pigs are smart. Pigs know what's going. Pigs will move around on you. 1,500, you don't know. You could have like 600 really fast pigs. Because they look identical. You can't tell them apart. You're trying to one, two, three. I think I counted him already. Pigs are hiding behind trees and stuff. Now you raise them and then you sell them, right? And then people uh, eat them, right? See, now I always think, you know what? They, you, I hate to say it, but I think you're kind of a weasel guy, okay? Because let me explain to you what he's doing. Jay, listen to me. He's raising these little pigs, little, they're, when they're little, the piglets, right? That's what you call them, the piglets. And they're little tiny and they're very cute. And, uh, and, and they come out, huh? And you feed them every day. And they, come, and they come out and you feed them the little pig food. You feed them slop, right? And they like it, don't they? And then what do they do? They come out every day looking for you because you got the food, right? And they love you, don't they? Right? No, they love you. And every day they come out looking for you because you're their pal because you feed them. And then eventually then they become big fat pigs. Then what do you say? Hey, get in the truck. We're going for a ride. Yeah. They're in there with balloons and stuff thinking they're going to a ball game. They're going to go get whacked, aren't they? You ever seen how they whack pigs? Because I, I actually had to do a show for a bunch of cattle people and, and pig people. And I said, you know, because I, I, I thought it was like inhumane. I thought they'd get the pigs in like a room and just like, you know, hey, look, Elvis. And they turn around and boom, they shoot them or something. <laughs> and the farmer told me, he says, it's not that bad. It's very, it's very, uh, it's a very humane thing. First we stun them, then we kill them. They stun them, right? How do you stun a pig? What, do you show them a big phone bill, tell them it's his? <laughs> pig's like, one 900 porky headed. Then they shoot you. Now you're stunned. 